Thanks. Um, so, um, on our agenda today, we have the usual Hackfest. We have um, discussion about the internship program, which was very successful last year, and um, so that's going to be kicking off soon. Um, project reporting from Composer. Um, and then we'll have a discussion again about um, working group updates uh, with Tracy back from China, I believe, right? Tracy on? She is, yeah. And then finally, um, confidential security bug handling. Uh, so David uh, is going to regale us with um, a slight modification to our process. We're able to record security bugs for all the projects. Um, and we'll cover that at the end. Um, so, but before we begin, I do want to uh, recognize Sawtooth for their 1.0 release and congratulate them. And um, I thought uh, that this would also be a good opportunity, not just for others to congratulate Dan and Nick and the team, but also um, for for those uh, for, for the for the Sawtooth team to maybe. Um, so we give some feedback on the process, what worked, what didn't work, what was awkward, what was, you know, what was moving and so forth. I think it'd be instructive to all who intend to get there eventually. Congrats, guys. Thanks, Chris. Um, on behalf of, of the many other Sawtooth maintainers. Um, you know, I, I think the, the process, probably like, like any release, uh, the, the the hardest part that 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 we go through is is a lot of the things on the engineering side of just trying to slow things down and button things up so it's it's stable for for the release uh, yeah. from, from a hyperledger process perspective i think all the the uh, the marketing and outreach worked really well and i really appreciate the support from uh, jessica and meredith and um and uh, uh, Greg and, and everybody over there getting that together. Um, I think we we also developed our own processes for what was important to us on the Sawtooth team that weren't part of the Hyperledger processes, uh, things mm -hmm. around stability and uptime testing. So we had our own key performance indicators, KPIs, mm -hmm. uh, that, that we enforced for our release. Um, I don't know that I would propose that, that other projects adopt the KPIs that were important to us, but uh, we would kind of hope that that any project that's going to 1.0 has some uh, some sort of stability KPI. Mm -hmm. uh, what we did for, for ours was we would put our builds through uh, a seven-day test with multiple validators and try to put it at uh, a heavy load on the system and that way we were able to expose bugs that would only come out at say the the thousandth block or uh, you know some other race condition that would only come out probabilistically yep so those are just some of the things off, off the top of my head but you know i'm open to, to more discussion here. Mick's just uh, IMing me that he's uh, stuck in a Windows update, so uh, he'll be along in a few minutes. <laughs> I'm stuck in a Comcast <laughs> update. <so. laughs> Yay. All right. So thanks, Dan, and thanks uh, to Mick and, and the rest of the team. Um, it's, uh, I think it's, it's great that we have multiple projects at 1.0 and uh, look forward to seeing more. Yeah, and it was definitely um, great okay. to have Fabric go through that that PR process in particular first to establish those things, and that's probably why it was so smooth for us. <laughs> Having an older sibling is sometimes well, the older sibling is not that great, but uh, works out for the others. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's being the oldest in my family. So <laughs> okay. <clears throat> So next up, Todd, Hackfest planning. So yep. uh, Los Angeles is well underway. I think there's an agenda building up. Um, yeah, so just, we yeah, just a couple couple of things for LA. Uh, just drop the registration link in the in the rocket chat. If you haven't registered, get that done ASAP. Uh, draft agenda in the window as well. Uh, drop any topics in there. 
Uh, but more importantly, on the draft agenda for the day zero, the training that we're doing, helping uh, devs come up the learning curve, we have uh, mm-hmm. some volunteers for Fabric, for Composer. Uh, would love the other projects that are going to be there. Um, sign up. Uh, so Sawtooth, for sure. I saw a few of the maintainers that are going to be there. If we can get names assigned for that, uh, as well as all the other projects. So for any of the uh, maintainers on those projects, please uh, pop in there and um, sign up for that. That'll be hugely helpful for getting new devs into our ecosystem and just helping them better participate in, uh, you know, the the two days of the Hackfest where people can focus on mm-hmm. some more advanced topics. Uh, onward from there, Dubai still still pending. Hope to have an update soon. Um, unfortunately, nothing yet. Uh, Amsterdam, we did announce last night. That is fully confirmed. So let me just drop the uh, registration link into the Rocket Chat. So please get registered for that uh, June 27th to 29th. For those of you that were there in October of 16, I think, um, same venue, ABN AMRO is hosting again. Uh, so really happy to, to bring this back there. They were a great host and partner on that. Uh, mm-hmm. Similarly, the same thing for the draft agenda there, dropping any, any topics. And for those that will be there on the first day, um, please help with, the training, training and intro stuff. Uh, that's all. Unless okay. any questions? Nope. Okay. Thanks. How about the internship program? Yep. Uh, so internship program, really quickly. This will be very similar to last year. Uh, as Chris said, this was uh, successful for many of the interns and those that uh, hosted the interns and mentored them. So really appreciate everyone that pitched in for that. Um, So let me just drop a few links in. So here is an overview for the program. It'll look very similar to last year. The main action item at this point is over the next uh, about two and a half weeks from now until the 23rd, we are calling for any mentors that want to step up to uh, help uh, an intern um, and propose any projects that they'd like to see these interns work on. So last year, we had uh, over double the number of mentors than we were able to accommodate. Um, This year, I suspect we'll get even more submissions. Uh, So we have expanded the size of the internship program. So we'll be able to host twice as many interns this year. Um, Mm -hmm. For anyone that signs up as an intern and completes the program, we will be flying them out to Hyperledger Global Forum, which is our uh, major event at the end of this year. So here is information for anyone interested in being a mentor. Uh, please get that submitted by the 23rd, and I will continue to remind everyone up till the deadline. Any questions there? Yeah, and for those, for those people who weren't in um, Lisbon, we, we heard from um, a few of the interns uh, as they read out on their, their projects, and they were really pretty sharp kids, and, and they did some really good work. So. Um, I'm really, I'm really pleased with how that how that worked out. Great. Any questions there? Uh, Todd, is there are some uh, uh, like a limitation for the inter students. Um, in what sense for for limitation? Uh, for from uh from what what kind of areas or countries? Yeah. Can they, can they apply? Uh, so I, I think probably the question is related to China. I know there was an issue um, last year in not being able to have interns in China just due to some new regulations. Um, we do have a process to be able to bring Chinese interns on for this year. So that's that's no concern. So um, definitely we would love to see interns there and mentors from China as well. Okay. It would be great. Thanks. Great. Any other questions on the internship program? All right, and um, then I guess the next up is a Hyperledger Composer update. And is um, Caroline or or, or uh, Simon on to give the report? And Chris, it doesn't look like that ended up getting completed last night, so we'll probably need to punt on that and nudge them again. Oh, oh, it didn't. Oh, I'm because I, I, I can't click on the link, so I don't know. <laughs> okay, I guess we'll have to punt on that one. 
Uh, okay, uh, Tracy, uh, quarterly updates. And again, uh, I apologize, I can't follow along, but if you wouldn't mind sort of going over the updates that you made based on last week's conversation, um, uh, that would be great. Okay, sure, no problem. So I'm, uh, in the Rocket Chat, I just pasted the link to the updated template. Um, I updated it based on some of the feedback that came in uh, last week to combine a couple of sections into uh, the overall activity in the past quarter. Uh, so I combined the work products, um, the activity in the past quarter, and kind of a, you know, those, I think those two sections were combined into to one. And then uh, I also added a planned work products for what livables the working group would be working on in the upcoming quarter. Uh, besides that, um, I think that's pretty much it as far as the changes go. Let me just check the last one um, and that we had prior to make sure that was it. Uh, Oh, I combined three sections, work products, overall activity in the past quarter and current plans into basically the overall activity in the past quarter. And then I added the kind of what's next for the upcoming quarter. Everything else, um, I removed the working group scope uh, as requested because the assumption is that the scope shouldn't change unless it's already gone through the CSD. So uh, yeah, those are the changes I made. It's a little smaller than it was before. Um, and should be pretty straightforward to, to complete for the working group leaders. That looks good to me. Thanks, Tracy. Other, other thoughts and comments? Concerns? Okay. Then if we seem to be good with this, I suggest, Todd, we take a quick vote if we're at quorum. Yep, uh, actually all 11 are here. Uh, so running through the list quickly, are no. Awesome. Yes. Bahua. Yes. Finn. Yes. Chris. Yes. Dan. Yes. Greg. Yes. Hart. Yes. Jonathan. Yes. Kelly? Yes. Mick? Yes. Nathan? Yes. All right. Uh, that passes unanimously. Okay, so I will uh, make sure that this template gets added so that when a new page gets created, it will automatically fill in the template the same way the project update does. Um, and then just so that we know, I uh, the schedule is currently set to start in April because I wasn't sure how long it was going to take to pass this. Uh, would the TSC like me to change the schedule so that we're starting sooner than the beginning of April? Um, yeah, I don't see a reason to hold off until April. Um, I would think we do, should get going. Do you start in March then? Um, okay. Yeah, I guess. Um, I mean, what do other people think? This looks like a pretty yeah. low hurdle for for people to fulfill, so I don't think we need. Yeah, you know. I mean, and many of them are already keeping, you know, minutes and records and stuff, so it shouldn't really be that hard to pull together. Um, I, uh, maybe maybe give a couple of weeks for the first one and then move on. Does that seem reasonable? Middle of the month. That seems reasonable to me. Yeah, that sounds totally fine. Mom or Hart or Vipin, uh, is that okay with you guys? I can't remember who's up first, and I apologize, I don't have visibility to yeah, who's sorry. first. The, that... the, the architecture working group is up first. Okay, so Rom, are you good with that? Maybe Rom's not on. I'll tell you what, why don't we do this? Why don't we, why don't we ask Rom uh, if he's okay with that? And if he is, then let's do that. 
Okay. I'll get that uh, template set up so that it's uh, new pages are created with it, and I'll update the schedule uh, after talking with you. Right. So, super. Thank you. Um, okay. So, uh, last up then is uh, Dave to uh, introduce a, a site change to uh, sort of the onboarding process for projects uh, pertaining to the security work group and their processes. Dave? Yeah, hi. Um, <clears throat> so because, so last year we, uh, part of my mission was to get a confidential security bug handling process in place, which we were able to do and it required changes to our JIRA to uh, allow for people to report a bug, flag it as security and it would be held confidential um, so that the security team could triage it and uh, deal with it, mitigate it some ways, um, and then disclose it. It's all part of the re uh, responsible disclosure process that nearly all open source projects use um, these days. Uh, even closed source projects do this. Uh, last week, we, or I say, I guess earlier this week, we had a slight security issue come in against a project that didn't uh, use JIRA for its uh, bug handling process. And it became immediately obvious that we can't do uh, confidential security bug handling using GitHub issues. So I immediately asked the help desk uh, to set up JIRA projects for all of the projects that we have, just so that we can handle confidential security bugs um, for all of them. Now, I, uh, the email I sent out to everybody, I just wanted to let everybody know that we're in the process of finding a consultant um, to help us modify our JIRA to adhere to the process that we all want to use. And I'd like to invite maintainers or participants in any of the projects to participate in that so that we can um, spend the money and get a result that everybody um, agrees is a, is a marked improvement. and. I'm hoping that projects will reconsider switching away from GitHub issues over to JIRA um, just so that you can have all your bugs in one place. Uh, I understand GitHub issues is very convenient, but um, I did some searching yesterday and there is no support for confidential bugs at, at um, GitHub as far as I can tell. In fact, I found a bug. Uh, sorry, uh, an issue that was reported to GitHub about four years ago to support that feature and it's still open. So I don't think they have any interest in, in developing that feature. So I just wanted to give everybody an update that we're setting up JIRA projects for all projects and um, we're gonna modify JIRA to be more user-friendly for our community. And I'd like um, anybody who's interested in helping to email me and um, participate. Yep. So just one, just just make things perfectly clear to everybody. Um, you're not required to use Jira for your issue tracking. If you're still, you know, if you if you still want to use GitHub issues, you can do that. Um, this is just for the security issues that everybody has to have a Jira. Does that make sense? How many yeah. projects do we have that are actually using GitHub issues? Um, Three. But, yeah. Fabric, so Composer, Sawtooth, and Burrow. ADA. Actually, oh, so that are using Jira. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. I was asking about the, the GitHub issues. So, like, w is it one or two projects that, that are aberrations here, or is it uh, broader than that? We have Composer, oh, Quilt, and Aroha that are using GitHub in some portion, in some fashion. Yes. And we have Fabric, Sawtooth, and Indie that are using Jira for the whole thing, I believe. And, uh, and Cello also uses Jira. Oh, great. Cello, yeah. Cello does, and I think Burrow is still using GitHub, but I'm... I don't know if Silas is on. Uh, even Explorer used Jira. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, okay, great. So it seems like most of us are using Jira. 
That is correct. Yeah, so, I think probably the one that stands out then is uh, if Iroha is also moving towards a 1.0, then having production security bugs is is more significant of an issue. Uh, so and I would encourage would encourage them to uh, adopt Jira and, and move off of GitHub issues. They're not confusing their end users about where to log things. Yeah, and one yeah. of the things that you know will what you know that Dave was hinting at in terms of getting a sort of Jira or you know a CI tooling expert. Basically, uh, one of the things that we've been talking about with the potential vendors is better integration of the tools. So, for instance, we should be able to have a bot that could take a GitHub issue and automatically populate a Jira issue appropriately for that project and then you know leave a comment saying thank you for your you know uh for, for your issue you know we've recorded it in jira here you can track it and so forth and then close it and i think the other thing to bring up is that hyperledger iroha is using a non-hyperledger jira plus github issues so we really do want to try and convince iroha to move to the hyperledger jira for tracking their bugs Yeah. All right. Well, then, Tracy, you and I should go talk to Aroha. <laughs> yep. okay. um, the other piece of my email, there was one last detail, which was, uh, should a project decide to not use the Hyperledger Jira? Um, the one thing that I do want them to do, and I'm going to kind of make it a requirement, is that you post very publicly in big letters that says, if you are reporting a security issue, either email security at hyperledger.org or report it to the JIRA at Hyperledger um, so that it's properly handled. And I can work with each of the teams that choose not to use JIRA to make sure that that notice is put in place. Sounds that's good. pretty much it. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Dave. Well, since we didn't have an update, uh, this was a very short call. Unless there's any other action items or any other topics people would like to discuss, I suggest we adjourn and give people 40 minutes back or 35. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Cheers. Have a good day. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks,